Does God exist? St. Thomas Aquinas, a medieval philosopher and theologian, answered with a resounding yes. And he summarized his arguments for such a position in five ways. However, his arguments have been uh, recently gone unnoticed. It is mainly because of what uh, C.S. Lewis calls the chronological snobbery. It is the habit of many of us of rejecting ideas just because they are old. However, such a position or such a move is very much intellectually irresponsible because truths, if they are objective, are timeless. They are true regardless of the age that you are in. St. Thomas Aquinas sees the existence of God as a preamble of faith. What do you mean by a preamble of faith? It simply means that it is one of the steps that one should take in order to be able to have divine faith. What is divine faith? Divine faith is the firm ascent to divine revelation because God reveals it, and such is made possible through grace. The uh, divine faith involves unseen objects such as uh, the Trinity, heaven, grace, and all other uh, parts of divine revelation. Divine faith is supremely rational. Why? Because the testifier of its object is God himself who can neither deceive nor be deceived. In other words, divine faith is belief in what, in what God reveals simply because God reveals it. And natural reason can prove that we must believe in what he reveals because we can know that or from natural reason that God is truth himself and that God is fully good and God is perfect. What is fully good, what is perfect, what is omniscient, cannot lie, cannot err, and cannot deceive. And therefore, it is very re reasonable to believe in what he reveals. The, ex the existence of God is a first step because how can we have faith in a God whom we don't know exists? Therefore, St. Thomas Aquinas sees the existence of God as first uh, needing to be estab established by natural reason as a preamble to the acts of divine faith. The ascent of faith is a reasonable act, uh, Cardinal Dulles has said. St. Thomas takes over from Aristotle the idea that man is irrational. And the ability to act according to reason is our fundamental distinguishing characteristic as human beings. And giving us this capacity, God expresses his will that our free human acts conform to the criterion of rationality. Belief or faith is a free, free human act by which we accept the word of God. It would be immoral to believe what is contrary to reason. Faith for St. Thomas Aquinas does not destroy reason, but builds on it and perfects it. Reason can do a lot to serve faith. Reason, for example, proves the existence of God and his relationship to the world. Uh, the possibility of divine revelation, it also proves the perfect credibility of God if he would testify to anything. And it could also prove the fact that uh, such a divine revelation has occurred. Reason also uh, distinguishes true from fake divine revelation. It also provides an interpretative lens for understanding divine revelation. It also ponders the fittingness of certain divine acts throughout salvation history. It also dissolves alleged uh, intrinsic and extrinsic uh, contradictions entailed by faith. So again, St. Thomas Aquinas sees the existence of God as something that is knowable by natural reason. And it is a preamble of faith, which means uh, you must do this or you must know that God exists uh, first as a prior or precondition for faith. Why? St. Thomas Aquinas writes, The existence of God, like other truths about God which can be known by natural reason, are not articles of faith but are preambles to the article, articles, for faith presupposes natural knowledge, even as grace presupposes nature. In other words, his vision, his metaphysical vision that grace perfects nature, grace builds upon nature, makes him also see that faith, which is a work of grace, is also or must be built upon nature. St. Thomas Aquinas thinks, and he's, he's really right about this, that God's essence is so infinite such that it would be impossible to fit his very being 
into our finite minds. We're just too finite. We're just too limited. Aquinas writes, From sensible things, the power of God cannot be known. The holy power of God cannot be known, nor can His essence be seen. But, because they are His effects, we can be led from them so far as to know of God whether He exists and what must necessarily belong to Him as the first cause. In other words, he was saying, St. Thomas Aquinas was saying, that though God's essence in Himself is incomprehensible to us, who God is in His fullness cannot be fit inside our minds. Nevertheless, we can still know whether God exists. We can also we can still know the answer to the question: Does God exist with a yes or a no? And we can know it with a yes. We can answer with a yes through natural reason. And uh, we can also draw out the specific attributes such God must have through reason as a first cause of things. And this does not mean that, as we have made clear, that the divine essence is already uh, something that can be fit uh, inside our little minds. And this is made clear by a certain event. And it is uh, a certain event in the life of St. Thomas. It is concretized in that way, in his life, at the end of his life. Uh, this, was, uh, this happened when he was celebrating Mass. As G.K. Chesterton writes, and then something happened. It is said, while he was celebrating Mass, the nature of which will never be known among mortal men. What happened during that Mass? It is said that he was given a glimpse of the Divine Essence. He was given a glimpse of the Divine uh, Essence, which is incomprehensible. And the Aquinas who wrote so many pages about God said, about that moment, he said to Brother Reginald, he said, I can write no more. I have seen things which make my writings like straw. So the divine essence is not so incomprehensible, however, that God himself makes himself available or makes his existence uh, noble to us through the things that have been made by him. Therefore, on, uh, in his books, uh, Summa's Theologiae, he asks the question whether God exists. And he lists down certain objections or, to, uh, or certain answer to uh, certain reasons why a no could be given. He writes, it seems that God does not exist. And he gave sub, uh, two reasons. And then he writes, on the contrary, it is said in the person of God, I am who am. I answer that the existence of God can be proved in five ways. Uh, just to uh, make it clear, these are not the only arguments that Aquinas has for the existence of God. There are more in the rest of his works, but these are the ones that he uh, gave in his uh, work Summa Theologiae, and which have, has become uh, one of the most popular works throughout the centuries. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, Moses uh, see, uh, is uh, talking to God. And God was telling Moses his name. He revealed his name. What is the name that he reveals? He said, I am who I am. St. Thomas Aquinas uh, sees that event as illustrating the fact that we cannot grasp the fullness of the divine essence. God does not say, what kind of thing he is. Rather, he just says, I am who I am. And then, from that uh, very pregnant verse comes the very formulation, God's essence is existence. And that will be proved by the five proofs of the existence of God given by St. Thomas Aquinas. Dr. Peter Gray writes, also, noting, note the irony and the humor here. On the contrary, is usually an argument from authority. So what authority does Thomas appeal to on the question of whether God exists? In other words, St. Thomas Aquinas, when he uh, writes on the contrary in his Summa Theologiae, he usually uh, quotes authorities such as Augustine, Aristotle, and so on, to be able to, resp uh, to respond to the objections. Now, 
in this specific uh, part of the Summa, which authority did uh, Sinto Consequenas quote? He was quoting God himself, the God himself who speaks that God exists is shown by the fact that God has spoken. I am who am. Okay, so Frederick Copleston, Father Copleston, writes, as they stand, the five way of proofs of St. Thomas Aquinas may be said to be an explicitation of the words of the Book of Wisdom and of St. Paul in Romans, that God uh, can be known from his works as transcending his works. In other words, uh, there is also a, a theological rationale for the five ways of St. Thomas Aquinas. And this is the biblical fact that uh, which is revealed that we can know the existence of God through the things that he has made from sensible realities, from even the simple rock, even the simple ant, the tree, and so on. These different facts that we can observe reveal to us that God exists. And this is not a leap, a blind leap. This is through a metaphysical demonstration, a philosophical demonstration, which if the premises are true and the structure is uh, logically valid, then the conclusion follows that God must exist. 